Hey, welcome to the review where we hear their view. I'm joined by sport video journalist Gordon Pierre. We're discussing the big stories in sport, and certainly one of the big stories to date has to be the women national senior team 1 0 against USA. Not a bad result. I mean, after your predictions that they were going to get thrashed and maybe three, three was a good score. 1 0. And no, definitely, um, you know, it's a great score. I think um, the girls went out and did their country proud, you know, coming into a game versus the number one women's team in the world, the United States of America, you know, yeah. you, you got um, really, and the, the goal was a, a bit of a, um, you know, a bit of a sometime-ish goal, it was not, nothing spectacular. Um, hats off to the goalkeeper, you know, um, Kamika Forbes, she had an excellent, a, last, excellent night. last night. Of course, she's a bit of a Dr. Hyde, yes, uh, Mr. Jekyll, you know, and, um, you know, it, her mind was settled. You know, and she said so. And you know, hats off to the, the technical staff as well. I'm um, coach Randy Raljon. I think he got it right. Um, no, I just want to. You know, I have my um, doubts. You know, the amount of emotional energy that the girls would have expended, both physically and emotionally, expended in, in that game. You know, going forward to the game on Friday. So I am um, just about 50-50 in terms of that. I spoke to some of the girls, and um, the captain said they they're up and ready to go. They said they they they. they Hard work has taken a toll on them, but they're going to be ready. They're going to be up and ready to go. Um, you know, and she really commended the coach. You know, to, spoke about the um, the scouting that was done on each and every player in terms of who likes to kick with their right foot from long range distance, who likes uh, tackling. You know, so a, a number of things that was very instrumental. And I How think would you rate um, Coach Warjohn's involvement in terms of you know what has been deemed relative success against the US? Yeah, of course, <laughs> the, the result speaks for itself. You know, um, he, we, this is the best result we have gotten against the, the Americans ever. You know, and um, we even had the commentators confused. You could have seen visibly on the television screens that um, the girls were, were frustrated. The American girls were frustrated. They really didn't expect it, what they got. You know, and that's good for the team. Of course, the team will be banded together. They'll be confident going into the next game. They, um, they, they'll, they'll be able to pick up the, the country as really... Um, since the tweeting, the infamous tweet, I have my arm um, of my thoughts on that, both negative and positive. But um, one thing that is positive, the girls are ready to play for the coach. And I know that's always important. Now, how would that incident have prepared these girls for that? You know, was it perhaps because of the emotional involvement, the whole country banding behind them and people coming behind? Is it a case of out of travesty or out of, you know, something bad comes something good? Thus far, you know, um, thus far we definitely it's something that good that has come, come out of it. Uh, you know, we who like to believe in the scriptures will, will of, of course, remember Joseph going on to Egypt to prepare, you know, for his brothers, although it was not meant in good faith. So likewise, it, it, um, the tweet, you know, it, there will be a negative and a positive side to it, but one of the positive sides is that these girls have been banded together, you know. They have put aside all that may have separated them, and they're ready to play for the coach, and ready to play for the country, and hopefully we're going to be qualifying for a World Cup. Well, what sort of position does this result put us in now? I mean, we've got Haiti, we've got Guatemala to come. 1-0 against USA, what sort of position are we in now? Excellent position. Um, if you looked at the American team, the rest of some players go into this, into this, um, into this game. You know, looking forward, of course, uh, they, will, they, will, they will know that they cannot afford to slip up. And they will definitely, they're going to be making some changes. I think no other team, Haiti or Guatemala, can hold America to just a 1-0 defeat. So it's, it puts us in a good position going forward. Um, we have to get past Haiti though, and although Haiti um, won just one nil against Guatemala and Guatemala with ten, with ten players. No, yeah, I was now getting that Guatemala seemed to be the better player, the better team on the night. Um, they did so with ten players from about the 18th minute. You know, so you have to take that into consideration in, in, into the whole concept going forward. And hopefully, we, we as we go forward, we're going to see a Toronto Tobago team. We're going to beat Haiti. We're going to get past Haiti, and of course, give Guatemala about three just for safekeeping. Go to the next rounds and become one of the automatic qualifiers. Well, now that we've won, we've got now one result against the USA, and I, I know you predicted before. So you've got to reshuffle your prediction now and look ahead now. How do you see us going forward in terms of what position, or, or do we still have to look at that maybe the, the third place? Well, we definitely going to look that at half, our, that half spot, or, or, no, or, or can we be considered now, you know? In line to perhaps go on those automatic spots, you know all patriots, <laughs> and I'm one of them. Of course, I, we will want to think that we could get one of the automatic spots. Being realistic, though, no. the team have to take it one one game at a time. We have to get past 80, get past Guatemala. Oh, that will leave them second in the group. If we say that America is going to sweep the group, um, if we assume America is going to sweep the group, so it's going to be America first, and coming on the next group, we're going to have 
probably Mexico, Costa Rica, or Mexico, Jamaica. Uh, Mexico, your average Mexico will be the top team in that group. Um, so you're, you're going to play in a Mexican team. We have gotten a good result against them in the um, Pan American Games in, Guad in Guadalajara. I think it's in 2011, a one all draw. And probably everybody who, was, who viewed the game thought that we should have won that game. You know, so. We have a chance yet to get be one of the automatic qualifiers if all goes well and seeing what Coach Randy brings to the team in terms of scouting, you know, in terms of tactics for for, for teams. But we, as long as we get to the next round, we still have that half spot up for us if we had to come if we had to come forth. Um, we don't want to get beside ourselves. This game would have taken a lot out of the girls. The girls are going to be um, emotionally and physically tired. Of course, these games are pretty close. So you have to watch us as well. You're going to look at the yellow cards being picked up. Already, Melia Johnson has picked up a yellow card already. So you, you look at suspensions going down the road. You look at that we, are, we have a number of players who are injured or just coming back from injury. Um, they're not going to be 100%. And then the toll taken on by playing so much of close games together. So there's a lot to take into consideration. You know, um, we don't want, of course, all of us, the two pitchers will really want to fly off the, the hat and say, one nil against America. We Let's book our tickets for, for Canada next year. <laughs> but uh, we have to um, really hold uh, and look at it. The team has to get one game at a time. Uh, and I look, um, judging from what we see, have seen of Randy Rand Waldron, he will take it one day at a time and keep the girls head in the skies but feet on the ground. Now, it's interesting now, after that result against the US, of course, heads are going to be all gassed up now. How should we approach the upcoming games, Haiti, Guatemala. Should we play our natural game? Should we be conservative? Should we go defensively? Well, um, the coach, Coach Randy, is a naturally attacking coach. He has said so on more than one occasion. This team has a, a number of attacking gems. Of course, we have Aaron King at the back, and Kamika Forbes showed that she's no slouch. We also have um, Belgrave. We have Belgrave. So we have solid players at the back. But our strengths really lie in going forward. Our strengths really lie in the releasing Malone down the wings as well as um yeah, of yeah. course yeah 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 Kordner, that that is where our strength lies um all this will open space for the skillful and silky smooth Asha Saint Louis on top as well so we our real strength is going forward is going forward so we have to continue to play our game and in, in fact we have to start to play our game right against this the Haitian team um try to get a result I watched them last night and they seem to be very um suspect at the back I think they're going to be easily opened up to the to the to the the ball into the middle and then out to the wing. I think they're going to have loads of trouble trying to contain the pace. You see, you're going to have a mirror image on both sides. You're going to have Akila Malone down one side and Yaya Kordner down the other. So that pace, I think, is going to disattle dis any team, you know, who is not um, accustomed to it. Having said that, though, uh, they have some attacking problems going forward as well. And, you know, the legs, we cannot ill afford to discount. The, the price we the pay yeah, of playing against, the against, against, against America first game. You know, we, we cannot discount that. So we, we have to go forward. I think that so the, the, the game plan for the Haiti and the Guatemala game, I think, is to go play the natural game, get out, get early goals, and hopefully hold out. And probably we'll, we'll look to win two by two or three goals in both matches. All right, the men's senior team now, semi final round, perfect three out of three matches. You know, well, hats goes off. Uh, I have to really um, salute, you know, I love to salute. I have to salute, of course, Coach Steve Hart. You know, he came into a very difficult situation uh, just ab about, say, at the beginning of the year. You know, there was a number of things said when there, there was a change to uh, Steve Hart going into the Gold Cup. Uh, but he had proven, you know, he had proven the doctors wrong. And I think the change in the team, when you see Coach, when you see um, Kevin Jones, and the passion he's playing with, you know, the, the intensity he has brought to this um, Caribbean Cup semi-final round. Uh, when you see Kevin Molino, the joy he's playing with, the freedom he's playing his football with, you got to say, hats off to the coach. You know, may not ha have liked the way it went down. That's not my opinion, though. But, you know, a number of people would have said so. But at the end of the day, results. You judge the tree by the fruits. And the fruits, definitely, you have seen that the fruits is, you, you have seen that Chiron Tobago it has definitely gone one step ahead in football presently. So I want to congratulate the team. You know, um, again, I think Coach Hart will, will know that so. He's a very, very, you know, intelligent coach, a very astute guy. He will know that he has to keep the guys foot on the ground because what is up for grabs, we have to look at the bigger picture. And that's the place in the Copa America. We have to make sure that this time we do not come the first run up. We have to be able to get that, get the trophy in our hands, the Caribbean Cup. 
end the drought, the 13 year drought, and look forward to, to the Copa America as well as the Gold Cup next year. All right, so let's look at the statistics now. Nine goals, 40 NT, one against them. You know, put that in, in context and in perspective first. Well, it shows that we are playing excellent football at, at this period of time. Um, they, I saw comments, you know, um, as, uh, that they said, the captain said that oh, almost perfect um, final game against Antigua, which was a good game. I think it was an intriguing game. We did the commentary and I, I was really, you know, taking her back and I said that, I said that I really enjoy this game. It, it really is a football, not really a football fan, but a football lover game. You know, where you saw both teams really matching up each other. And we, we must mention that Antigua had eight foreign based professionals, including they have more players playing in the English Premiership than, than we do, in fact. Yeah, players playing for Swansea and, and, and Hull City. City. Yeah, definitely. So, you know, there was a, a lot of quality and you could have seen that, you could have seen the team it was two quality teams matching up each other. And um, just when we said it needed a mo moment of individual brilliance, up popped Kevin Molino to provide that. And I think um, he's going up to be one of the better number 10s that we have had in our weather jersey. Uh, it's going to be very interesting to see how he goes forward. Of course, next year he's going to be lacing up his boots together with Kaka. That, that, that's that's going to be very interesting, though. Mm -hmm. Molino coming up against Kata. Well, speaking of the number 10 position, has he been the best number 10 since Russell Asby? I know some people may say Otto Switley as well, there. It, it might be in that mix there, but putting that in perspective. Obviously. It's early days yet, you know, early days yet. He's a young man. Um, but judging, you know, you, you don't want to say yes, and then, of course, he cannot pass your doors because his head is so big. Well, it's early days yet, you know, to um, really compare and say that uh, Kevin is the best number 10. He's a young man, he had a lot, a lot of way to go. Um, but judging on his talent, you know, his potential that he has shown thus far, I think at this stage, I think he'll be way ahead of, of, of probably even Russell Latipi. You know, he's just about probably 24, 25 years, you know, and so he's definitely showing signs that he's going to be a pretty good, you know, if not the, the best number 10. Invest, you know, that, that's a very interesting point there. And I'm going to stay clear of that. I'm going to build, I'm going to build a, a great wall between you and I. No, well, you, you, you know, I'm just, I'm just putting it out there. Um, of course, he has a, lot, he has a long way to go. Um, he, he has already achieved in, in the USL. He's already twice the MVP. Um, he's, he was the first player. Leading goal scorer as well yeah, this season. A record-breaking leading goal scorer. You know, um, so early days yet. But if you are to put it from draw the, draw the, the, um, the, the graph, you know, the projectile going forward, we would say that he will, he will reach quite a lot, a lot further. It comes like when Sturgeon now steps on the scene and he went on to score the, the MLS scoring record. You could have seen even then that he was going to be a, goal, a prolific goal scorer, yeah. even after the two knee injuries. Yeah. All right, so putting into context TNT's win, what has been the best and the worst thing about it? I think the best thing for us is that um, the team has played together. Um, the team looked well, we brought in the subs on our game and they, although we wasn't as sharp as when the starting, the starters were, were in, they looked good. It, so it seems that we have good depth on the bench. We have a number of local players too. We have, of course, we have Willis Plaza, the, one of the most natural putters in our local football. We also have Rodel Winchester. Winchester. And Rodel Winchester, the boat Winchesters. Yeah, both Winchesters. We have both Winchesters. Or two guns. Uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, we have two, <laughs> two rifles uh, that I'm expecting to play an important part. We have um, Curtis Gonzalez. Yeah, he's going to also come in there as well. So there are a number of good players, you know, around local in the league. And I think that's the only negative for me is that more local players were not um, showcased in this part of the process. Of course, I totally understand um, Coach Hart's position. He's going into, he's going into a, a competition with limited preparation. He has to go to what he knows. And of course, the players would have had the international experience. All right, so what we're going to do right now, we're going to take a short break and come back with some more inside review where we hear their view, where we even speak about the West Indies. Keep it locked right here, we sports.